Hi everyone, I think I'm live. I'm Tobias Sauerwein. You may rather recognize my GitHub or Twitter handle, that's CG Toby. I am the maintainer of the NetAtmo integration, amongst others, as well as a core contributor to the PyAtmo package, which enables Home Assistant to talk to the NetAtmo backend API. First and foremost, I want to thank uh, Home Assistant and Nabucasa for organizing this event and for having me. It's a great honor to be uh, to be speaking to you here and to be part of all this. So um, this talk is intended to give you a quick overview on what device automations in general and device triggers specifically are. So what makes them cool and uh, why I think you should give them a try and implement them for your integration. Device automation, so what are those? Um, they are a layer on top of all the other automation mechanisms provided by Home Assistant. That being all the available kinds of triggers, conditions and actions like events, MQTT, state and so on and so forth. You all know those. Device automations are providing an abstraction for all those concepts to give the user an easier to use device-centric and fully UI-supported way to create automation. So device triggers are one of the three ingredients which resemble what's called device automation. But how do they look and where do you actually find them? As always, there are multiple ways to access them. For example, you can uh, navigate to an integration and pick one of the devices available. Let's go uh, with the NetAtmo camera in this example. In the device overview, um, you'll find automations. And when you click on this uh, little plus here, you are presented uh, with a dialogue to create device specific automations, which let you do some uh, something when let's say the camera detects movement. So uh, what exactly you can choose off depends on the integration, but uh, more on that later. So let's go with the camera detects movement here. After that, you can further build your automations in the well-known UI fashion, like adding notifications or turning on a light, etc. You get the point. Or, if I mentioned there are multiple ways, you could go straight to automations and create a new one. You just uh, skip the almond uh, dialog, and then you have to pick um, device as a trigger type. You have to select your device of choice, and uh, then you uh, then you uh, re <coughs> select the the event you want to go for. So it's pretty straightforward. The user does not need to know whether this relies on webhook events under the hood and what parameters to evaluate, and everything is uh, hidden nicely behind the covers. So all the gritty details about event data for the webhook events are nicely abstracted and the user does not need to care or know about any of those details. So, and this brings me to my next topic. So why should you care? Well, for one, it's easy. It's easy as cake to create automation triggers that way. And second, since it's fully UI integrated, it is also less error prone. As I mentioned before, you don't need to know any details. You just click on what fits your needs and you're good to go. So before we jump into actual code, let's talk about what Home Assistant expects you to implement. It basically consists of two steps. In the first one, a list of all possible device triggers is collected. This will provide the information that is required to assemble the user interface dialogues. Be aware that on the platform level, there is already a bunch of triggers implemented, so you don't need to care about those. In step two, those device triggers are translated to the appropriate triggers according to your algorithm. And then there is also the trigger schema that defines the interface to the trigger and the strings, of course, to provide nicely worded representations of the triggers to the user. And as usual, this is all translatable. So 
to actually get started with uh, writing some code, Home Assistant provides you with all the surrounding code required and gives you a great starting point to start implementing your, your own integration specific code. You just uh, run the scaffolding script, which lets you choose the integration you want to generate this for. And after that, you are left with all necessary files to implement the device trigger. I'll show you more of those uh, <clears throat> in detail in a minute. What the scaffolding script also provides is uh, ready to use tests to cover your newly developed code. So let's run uh, uh, quickly through the individual parts. The first one is the trigger types and trigger schema. This is where you get to specify the device and the event type plus if needed, any appropriate subtypes. This basically describes the interface of the trigger, which data the trigger requires to be passed along to be able to successfully translate this later on. The scaffolding uh, gives some examples, which I've delib deliberately um, shortened here in order to get this fitted on the screen so you can read it. And um, here I chose uh, turned on, like you would implement for switches, lights, and so on. The next uh, is uh, get triggers. Um, as mentioned before, this function is uh, the place to compile a list of all possible triggers for all entities belonging to your particular integration. Again, I've shrinked the code to only one trigger turned on again but I think it gets the point across anyway. So uh, that list of triggers provides exactly one trigger for returning on, <clears throat> for turning on something with a given device or and entity IDs. One step further, you get to wire things up in attached triggers. This is the place to interpret the device trigger in a way um, that the actual um, automation triggers, uh, to the actual automation triggers that have to be used behind the scenes. So for our example here, it, it turned on, this has to become a state trigger, which also specifies the from state and to state being off and on respectively. Uh, which is exactly what you would do when you were crafting the automation by hand. And last but not least is uh, the strings. They provide the text and translations for the user interface. The scaffolding auto generates sample text here as well, this time in the strings.json file. So when the device trigger is listed in the user interface, it will be represented by my beautiful light turned on, which is uh, pretty explicit. And this is a good thing. Now I'd like to go through those four parts again with actual code from the NetAtmo integration. Again, I've shortened this to fit on screen and make it readable. So the actual code is a bit longer and provides more triggers for more devices. I've chosen the indoor camera triggers for this example. And uh, those are movement, person, and person being away. Those are all webhook events sent out by the NetAtmo backend and are quite a bit of a pain to set up by hand, as you would have to know the exact event data that is returned by NetAtmo. For the list of triggers um, to acquire that, all possible triggers, um, I iterate over all NetAtmo devices in the registry and then append the corresponding triggers for each particular model. In the case of the indoor camera, these are the before mentioned trigger types, movement, person, and person away. So for every indoor camera registered, a new trigger would be appended and eventually, eventually returned back. Which brings us to the second important step, attaching a trigger. I retrieve the trigger, uh, the device data from the registry again to obtain information about the device model. And then if there are triggers available for that particular device, which we can safely assume to be true for our indoor camera, it will be attached, uh, it will attach an event trigger since these are webhook events and also specify 
um, the event data that has to match the camera device ID and the event type. And since uh, that is done as well, we are left with the textual representation of the triggers. Try to phrase it as simple and concise as possible to prevent confusion and um, make it clear to the, uh, to the user what the trigger will achieve. So let's wrap this up. Device automations is fun and it's easy to use, especially for the user. So go out and give it a shot. It's easier to implement than you might think. And I think our user base uh, will hopefully uh, thank you for it, or at least appreciate the fact that they can set up automations which less effort. For completeness sake, I should of course mention the docs. In the Home Assistant uh, developer portal, you can find all the necessary information about device automations and device triggers, as well as conditions and actions, of course, as they form what's called device automations. So th that's it from me. I, I hope you learned something and I'm looking forward to seeing more device automation pull requests in the near future. Thanks for your um, attention. I ran a bit short, so just about 11 minutes. I'll stick around if you want to ask questions or just want to chat. So just head over to the chat and uh, ping me if you want something. I wish you a great evening. Uh, I hope you had fun or well, evening or whatever time of the day it is for you. And yeah, enjoy the other talks. Thanks for listening. <laughs>